Come home to Jesus. This is the message that Max Solbrecken has proclaimed for 50 years to multitudes across the world. His crusades have taken him to the Hindus of India, Muslims of Pakistan, Buddhists of Sri Lanka, voodoo worshippers of Haiti, Catholics of Malta, and headhunters of northern Luzon. He has preached God's Word in stadiums, churches, tents, universities, and prisons. He comes to you today with the message of God's love and power. The man who is not afraid to preach the truth, Pastor Max Solbrecken. Lift up your hands, shout hallelujah. I'm turning now in the name of Christ to the book of 2 Peter. Chapter 1, reading in verse number 2, as follows in Jesus' name. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Grace and peace be multiplied. How much grace is that? And how much peace is that? Multiplied. Grace is unmerited favor. We shouldn't be in this position in the kingdom. We shouldn't be saved. We were sinners. And then Christ came into our lives and we received this unmerited favor. But St. Peter says, it's more than that. Grace multiplied. Multiplied. So there's so much grace. How in the world... Could we ever contain it all? And peace. Peace multiplied. I like that. Grace and peace multiplied. Unto you through the knowledge of God. It comes through the knowledge of God. And of Jesus Christ our Lord. According as his divine power. Say divine power. According to his divine power, hath given unto us all things, say all things, that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him, that's Christ, that hath called us to glory and virtue. All things, according to his divine power, hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, everything we need for life, and to live a holy life, and to be productive for Christ, and in the community, in our families, is all been given to us through the knowledge of him, by knowing Jesus, by knowing him that has called us to glory and virtue, has called us to glory and virtue, that we might be virtuous and knowledgeable, whereby are given unto us exceeding great, say exceeding, Great and precious promises. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great. What could be greater than great? Exceeding great. Great is the great. When something is great, it's great. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great. Something that's greater than great. And precious promises. The word of God. The word of God is exceeding great and precious. Greater than great. Greater than precious. Whereby given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. By these you might be partakers of the divine nature. Partakers of his nature. Partakers of the divine nature. A part of Christ receiving the same life as Christ is. Whereby are given unto us great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, a part of him receiving his life in ourselves, his nature, his grace, his goodness, his peace, his kindness. We've escaped the corruption that is, is, that is in the world through lust. We've escaped the corruption. That's why $6,000 is nothing to send a child, a young person over to be taught for 10 months how to live for Jesus. 
Someone say hallelujah. You can't buy that. But it comes through knowing Jesus and learning about him and receiving from him. We escape then, we escape the corruption that is through the world through lust. What was the sin of Satan? Pride number one and lust number two. Pride of his own beauty and his own power and lust for power, lust for greatness. He wanted to be number one above God. But the sin of Satan is pride and lust for power. Let's bow for prayer. Father, thank you, O Lord, for thy goodness and thy mercy. Thank you for being with us here and allowing us to preach your gospel. What an honor, what a privilege to hear your word and to believe it and receive it. Now bless each person and all those who hear this, this message over the YouTube, somewhere across the world, in India and Africa, in the Muslim nations of the world, all across Latin America and North America and the world. Jesus, may your blessing rest upon them all. As they hear this message, for Christ's sake and for God's glory, with much thanksgiving, would you shout a great big amen? amen. You may be seated. My message in, is entitled, Three Extraordinary Spiritual Truths. Three Spiritual Truths Extraordinary, we might say. Number one, God is duty-bound to keep his word. Number two, Satan is duty-bound to obey God's servant when we speak in the name of Jesus. And number three, we are duty-bound to serve Christ with all of our ability for as long as he lets us live or until Christ comes again. Three spiritual truths extraordinary. God is duty-bound. He's duty-bound to keep his word this word that I have just now read. He must keep this word. Because we are believers. We receive his divine power. We receive all of the goodness and all of the mercy and all that the promise of God promises us. This great nature of God is our nature. We are sons of God. We are children of God. Turn with me, please, to 1 John chapter 3. And the Bible says here, in verse number 1, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. Say, God's love. Can you ever in your, all of your life understand it? I cannot. O love of God, so rich and pure, so measureless and strong, shall forevermore endure the saints and angels' song. If you could think the ocean fill, where the straw parts are made, and every stalk under the quill, and every man is scribed by trade, to write the love of God above, or drain the ocean dry. Could the stroke contain the whole, or stretch from sky to sky? O love of God, so rich and pure, so measureless and strong, it shall forevermore endure. Saints and angels song. The love of God that sent Jesus Christ from heaven down to this sin-cursed earth to suffer and bleed and die for sinners such as us, such as you and I. Beloved, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. The sons of God. The sons of God. I remember one time we were in the West Coast and I was preaching to a bunch of native Indians on the West Coast way out there in the Pacific Ocean, one of the villages. And there was a woman there that was full of the devil. These were all native Indian people. And I cast the devil out of her in the name of Christ. She was a wicked woman. They said she was a very loosey-goosey type of woman. 
And it was, the devil was in her. But we cast it out. Demons came screaming out. The crusade continued for a few more days and I was casting the devil out of another person. And lo and behold, she came and said, could I pray with you? Here she had been a, really a, not a very good woman. But she was free now and had received the Holy Spirit. And I said, go ahead, you, you, you pray. And as she was praying and commanding the devil to go, the devil left. Because she was filled with God. I saw the power of God. A man who's a sinner, in one moment, the next moment is changed when he's born again. And when he's filled with the Holy Spirit, totally, completely. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. All things become new. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him, him not. Beloved, now. Say now. now. Shout out now. now. Wow. Now are we the sons of God. Right now. No, not when we get to heaven. Now. Metana. Yet new in Norwegian. Metana. That's French, isn't it? Right now. Beloved, now, we're the, now are we the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. That's settled. That can't be changed. If we walk with him, when he comes, he'll take us. It can't be changed. It can't be altered. If you walk with him, He'll walk with you. Walk with him, Lord. We'll walk with him. Walk with him, Lord. We'll walk with him. All along life's pilgrim journey. Um, we'll walk with him. Oh, talk with me, Lord. Talk with me. Talk with me, Lord. Talk with me. All along life's pilgrim journey. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to talk with me. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All with one accord. Blessed Jesus. Blessed Jesus. Blessed Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're here with one accord. Beloved, now we're the sons of God. Beloved, what terminology? He calls us beloved. This great man of God says we're beloved. Now we're the sons of God. It, not, it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know. We know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We shall see him as he is. Slip up your hands towards him. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In Hebrews, the sixth chapter, verse 17, we're in God, willing more abundantly to show unto us, to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel. His counsel cannot change. It's immutable. He confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. See, it is impossible for God to lie. God cannot lie. Jesus and I am the way, the truth, say the truth, and the life. We are in God, willing more abundantly to show under the heirs of promise, that's us, the immutability of his counsel, of his word, confirmed it by an oath 
about two immutable things in which it was impossible, impossible for God to lie. We might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. We can be certain without doubt we are God's children. He belongs to us. We belong to him. This world is not our home. We have a home waiting for us. Hallelujah. It says in 2 Timothy, the second chapter, 2 Timothy chapter 2, it tells us that God cannot deny himself. He cannot deny himself. What he has spoken has to come to pass. 2 Timothy Chapter 2, verse 12. If we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. Buckle up now. Hallelujah. Because we're taking off. <laughs> if we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Don't do it. Don't deny him. If we believe not, and he abideth faithfully, he cannot deny himself. It's impossible for God to lie, impossible for God to break his word, impossible for God to deny himself. God is duty bound to keep his word. Oh, hallelujah. John 3 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What does that mean? That means that if we come to him and receive him, we have everlasting life. We have it. It's ours. Impossible for God to lie. Look at the book of Isaiah the prophet. It tells us about God the Father and what he has to say. Precious Jesus. Isaiah 45. And let's turn to verse number 21. Tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Is there anyone else who could tell the future from way back? No one. Let tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared us from ancient time. Who hath told it from that time. Have not I the Lord. And there's no God else beside me. A just God. And a Savior. There's none beside me. Not Buddha. Not Muhammad. Not Allah, not Gaia, no other God. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God. There's none else. I have sworn by myself. The word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness, and shall not return. I've sworn, I've stated it, I've declared it. It shall not return. One day every knee will bow. One day every ayatollah. One day every Hindu, Muslim, Buddhist, Shintoist, Shanghuist, Rastafarian, every atheist, communist will bow. So I was wrong. I was wrong. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Clap your hands and praise the Lord. Come on. Give the Lord. Oh, precious Jesus. Look at Jeremiah. The 21st chapter of Jeremiah. Oh, so precious and so powerful. Jeremiah 1, verse 12. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well sent, for I will hasten my word to perform it. God said, I will be in a hurry to confirm my word. I will hasten. You don't need to wait. I'll give it to you right away. 
God says, I'm in a hurry to confirm my word. That you might know and believe. Prove. Precious Jesus. He will forgive every sinner that calls on him. He will heal the sick. I am getting stronger and stronger day by day as I preach sure his word. Oh, hallelujah. I feel stronger this year than last year. Stronger. I want all of you to remember a very special date, August the 14th. That's when my beautiful wife, Donna, has her 88th birthday. Stand up, darling. Give her a big stand up, sweetheart. There she is. 88. And I'm 86, and we're just like a couple of young lovers. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands, praise the Lord. Why? Because we love Jesus. We love each other. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But the world, for my people, have committed two evils, he said. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. And you, the most sisters, broken sisters, they can hold no water. No wonder the world's in trouble. They've broken the commandments. They've broken his promises, his word. They're trying to run things on their own. You can't do it. He said, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come now. Let us reach together to see the Lord. But the sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Come now. Let's reason together, Lord. Let's talk things over. When I was up at the university here as a chaplain in 1971, I would tell those students, and I've done it in universities and prisons and other places around the world, God's not unreasonable. He said, come, let us reason together. Let's talk things over. You got a problem? Tell it to Jesus. He's got bigger shoulders than you have. He can handle anything. Tell him whatever you want. Come now, let us talk things over. Let's reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Will he do it? Of course he will do it. He said he will do it. Will he answer prayer? Oh, yes. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open to you for everyone. Did you hear that? 50%, 25%? No, everyone. Everyone that asks receives. He that seeks finds. To him that knocks it shall be open to him. It says in Luke's gospel, the 11th chapter, if ye who are God's children, if you ask him for the Holy Spirit, he'll give it to you. He will give you the Holy Spirit. Precious Jesus, he will do it. Let me give you John's gospel, the 14th chapter of St. John. And here it is. Verse number 11. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall ye do also. And greater works shall ye do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. I will do it. Believe me that I am in the Father. And the Father in me, or else believe me. For the very work's sake. The works that I do shall ye do also, and greater works than these shall ye do, because I go unto my Father, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son, if ye shall ask anything in my name. I will do it. 
God is duty bound to keep his word. Number two, Satan is duty bound to obey God's servants that come in the name of Jesus. Genesis chapter 3, and Adam and Eve have sinned. And God comes walking in the garden. He says, Adam, where art thou? Where are you? I'm here, but I'm afraid. I've been hiding from you. I know you're going to come. I've sinned. My wife has sinned. So what have you done? The old blame game starts. Not my fault. It's the woman you gave me. You gave me the woman. It's your fault. <laughs> he said to the woman, what have you done? She made more sense. She said, the devil tricked me. The devil deceived me. And then he talks to the devil. He says to the devil inside the snake, the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman. People hate snakes. Did a survey in the U.S. of A. 89% of the people hated snakes more than any else, any other animal. They hated snakes. They would lay Snakes made out of rubber across certain roads, and they have cameras. People will see that snake and drive over back and drive over it again. They drive over again and again because they hated that snake. God said the human race will hate snakes. And then that's not all. But I'll put enmity between your seed and her seed. There's the first, the law of the first mention. There's the promise of a deliverer. There's the promise of, of, the, of the virgin birth of Christ. The seed of the woman. Not the seed of the man. The seed of the woman. The seed of the woman will crush your head, Satan. The seed of the woman. The snake is dead. I said the snake is dead. The serpent's head has been crushed. Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus, I saw Satan, Lucifer, like a lightning fall from heaven. I saw him fall. And now I give you power to cast out devils. Cast him out. That magazine that you received tonight, Ralph Collins, 1967, Trenton, Ontario, when we were casting the devil out of him, as I was quoting that scripture. And Jesus said, Behold, I saw Satan as lightning fall from heaven. When I quoted it, he came at me like he was going to kill me. In 1976, we had a great crusade. We had what we called Indian days. In those days, they didn't say natives. They called everyone Indians who were of the Indian background. A.A. A. Allen used to have Indian days in the U.S. And I said, well, I can have it too. So we have what they call Indian days. They came from all over in the old Edmonton Revival Center. The place was packed to the doors. We had room for 600 people when it was packed out. And I was on the radio in those days. And a man called Ernest Hunter a great preacher of the gospel, a native Indian, a Cree. But he had fallen. He left his wife and was living with another woman and drinking. And I was on Radio CFCW, and I was talking about backslidden preachers who would leave their wives and, and go drinking. And he heard me say that, and he was half cut. He said to his woman he was living with, I'm going to kill that picture. She said, oh, no. His brother came to him, I'm going to go to Ebon and kill Max Holbrecken. His brother said, no, you can't do it. He said, I'll do it. And after drinking for a whole week, 
he jumped into the pickup and he had the 3030 in the rack right behind him. He drove down to Edmonton, 149th Street and Stony Plain Road. The place was packed out. Pastor Driver always sat at the back to welcome people. There was one seat left. Ernest Hunter just parked in front of the church and he came in. He said, Pastor Driver said, there's a spot for you right here. And he said, no, I'm going up to that man. I'm going to kill him. And he came down there. He was a big man. He was a handsome man. Was he handsome? Big, tall, handsome Native Indian. And he walked up to me and I saw him coming. And he stood there and said, I'm going to kill you. I said, you lying devil. And I'd been a bit of a street fighter myself <laughs> when I was younger and trained in boxing and all kinds of stuff like that. Boy, when he said that, I said, you, you lying devil. And I walked up to him and I hit him in his left shoulder and spun him around and slapped him down. And my knee in his back. Knocked the wind out of him and I cast the devil out of him. And all of a sudden, he said, I woke up. And he said, Pastor Max, why did I want to kill you? Because <laughs> the devil was gone. Just that quick. I just stand up, and he was sober. And then some years later, when his former wife passed away, then we had a big wedding for him, and Right in the, the old-fashioned Bible. Camp. Ernest Hunter. Still alive. Still talks about that. <laughs> he said, you remember the night you cast the devil out of me? Oh, I said, I won't forget. <laughs> Someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Can you say praise the, Lord? praise the Lord? Satan has to go. He obeys God's servants. James 4 and 7. And James tells us what to do when the devil comes. Oh, I love that. When I think about all those people that have been delivered. And the demons have come out and they have changed. They are changed. In James, the fourth chapter of James. And let's look at verse number 7. James 4 and 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil. And he shall flee from you. Draw nigh unto God. He will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. And purify your hearts, ye double-minded. When the devil comes, submit yourself to God first. And then you have power over the devil. Look at what St. Saint, Saint Peter also. Look at St. Peter. First Peter chapter 4, verse number 8. Be sober. Stop drinking. Be vigilant. Be on the guard. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist in the faith. Resist him. Resist the devil. In the book of John's gospel, we find this marvelous gospel where the Bible says, the thief, the devil has come for only three reasons, to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life. You might have it more abundantly. Hebrews, the second chapter. Let me give you this. Oh, I feel like I'm back in the Bible college teaching again. Someone say hallelujah. Are you learning? Are you listening? Oh, I love that Bible college. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death, say death, yes. through death, he might destroy, say destroy, destroy him that has the power of death, that is the devil, say the devil, and deliver, say deliver. Then we through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Through the death of Christ, Satan has been destroyed and we are delivered. 
When something's destroyed, you can't fix it. You can't fix it. Devil is too late. You are defeated for eternity. Someone shout hallelujah. Glory to God. John 19 and 30. And Jesus hung upon the cross. And he cried out to tell us die. In Greek. From the Greek verb teleo. That verb has three essential meanings. Number one, to finish something and bring something to an end. He had finished his work. He had brought to an end the devil's power over the human race. Number two, it means to fulfill something. He had fulfilled every scripture in the Old Testament concerning the Messiah. It means to pay that which is owed. He had paid for all of our sins. Every dirty, rotten, filthy sin you've ever committed, he paid for it. His blood washes every sin away. I believe Jesus saves and his blood washes whiter than snow. I believe Jesus saves and his blood washes whiter than snow. Do you believe Jesus saves and his blood washes whiter than snow? Do you believe Jesus saves and his blood washes whiter than snow? The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. Without the shedding of the blood, there's no forgiveness. It is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. And the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sins. Someone shout praise the Lord. Number three. We are duty bound to serve Jesus Christ for the rest of our lives. Whatever comes our way, we're duty bound. We've made a pledge. We can't break that pledge. We're duty bound to serve him. Come hell or high water. We we'll walk with Jesus. Nothing will deter us. Nothing will stop us. Nothing will impede us. We will march on. March on. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. In the great will survival, about 1905, the will survival was swept across England such a revival in Wales. They were sending missionaries all over the world. Missionaries were in India with great success, except in one place called the Assam, where they were headhunters, great warriors. The Assam would not listen. Finally, one family was one for Christ in the Assam. And then it began to spread to others. But the chief didn't like it. The chief said, no. He said to this warrior, you cannot bring this new thing to our people. You must recant it and stop it. It's spreading. But the minister, the, this headhunter, was converted. He said, no, I can't stop it. So then they called everyone together, the entire tribe. And the chief said to this man, stand here, you and your wife and two sons. You must now turn from this new faith. If you do not, you will die. The man stood there and he sang, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The chief looked at the archers and nodded and the arrows flew. And the man's wife lay on the ground 
twitching, dying. He said, you have another chance. He sang, though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. And the, again, this chief nodded towards the archers. And the arrows flew, and the two sons lay there, twitching, dying. You have one more chance to save yourself. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back, no turning back. And all of a sudden, the archers again released the arrows. And the man lay dead on the ground. The chief couldn't understand it. He was one of his best fighters. How in the world, what was this? Was this a magical thing? Why would he allow his wife and two sons and himself all to be killed? And then the chief thought, I should try it. So he called them all together. He said, I now proclaim myself as a follower of Jesus Christ. And the whole tribe was converted in the Assam in India. Precious Jesus, where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Luke chapter 9, I'm going to close with this. Luke chapter 9, I want to challenge you now. These are the words of Jesus. St. Luke chapter 9, verse 57. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said to another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go bury my father. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go. Let me first go. Let me first go to bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said to him, No man, no man, having put his hand to the plow and turns to look back, is fit for the kingdom of God. No man, no man, having put his hand to the plow and turning to look back is fit for the kingdom of God. Three spiritual truths, extraordinary. God is duty-bound to keep his word. Satan is duty-bound to obey God's servants who speak in the name of Jesus. And we are duty-bound to preach this gospel, to walk with him, to live for him, to serve him, until the hour of our death or the coming of Jesus. Lift up both of your hands towards heaven. For 50 years, Pastor Max Solbrecken has awakened the conscience of his audiences through the anointed proclamation of the claims of Christ who said, no man can serve two masters. You cannot serve God and mammon. The truth is you are either for him or against him. You cannot remain neutral. Great costs are involved in spreading of Christ's gospel. Please consider investing in this ministry. Contact Max Solbrecken at MSWM, Box 44220, RPO, Garside, Edmonton, Alberta, T5V1N6, Canada. You 
have been watching the Come Home to Jesus television ministry with Canada's preacher man, Dr. Max Solbrecken, who has proclaimed the Word of God across the world for 50 years without fear or favor of man or devil. Ask for Canada's revival magazine, The Cry of His Coming, when you write. Invest in souls by supporting this end time ministry. Please contact Max Solbrecken at MSWM Box 44220, RPO Garside, Edmonton, Alberta, T5V1N6, Canada. Oh, God.